The plan required the destruction of all existing governments and religions. In 1776, Weishaupt organized the Illuminati to put the plot into execution. The word Illuminati is derived from Lucifer and means holders of the light. Weishaupt's revised plan required his Illuminati to do the following things to help them accomplish their purpose. One, use monetary and sex bribery to obtain control of people already occupying positions in high places in the various levels of all governments and other fields of human endeavor. Once an influential person had fallen for the lies, deceits, and temptations of the Illuminati, they were to be held in bondage by application of political and other forms of blackmail and threats of financial ruin, public exposure, and physical harm, and even death to themselves and their loved ones. Number 12, told those present that they must use their wealth to have candidates chosen in public office who would be obedient to their demands and would be used as pawns in the game by the men behind the scenes. The advisors will have been bred, reared, and trained from childhood to rule the affairs of the world. Number 13, control the press. Number 16, infiltrate into the secret Freemasonry to be used for their purposes. That's been documented many times. Number 17, expound the value of systematic deception, use high-sounding slogans and phrases, and advocate lavish promises to the masses, even though they cannot be kept. I will not forget the wound to our country and those who inflicted it. I will not yield. I will not rest. I will not relent in waging this struggle for freedom and security for the American people. So I, I don't know where he is, nor do, you know, I, I just don't spend that much time on him. We will not tire, we will not falter, and we will not fail. Uh, terror is bigger than one person. And I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, the, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places. And, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, of which there's no real enemy. Who knows if he's hiding in some cave or not. Uh, we hadn't heard from him in a long time. Operation Northwoods, the plan called for innocent people to be shot on American streets. This is the Pentagon for boats carrying refugees fleeing Cuba to be sunk on the high seas, for a wave of violent terrorism to be launched in Washington, D.C., Miami, and elsewhere. People would be framed for bombings they did not commit. Planes would be hijacked using phony evidence, all of which would be blamed on Castro to justify an invasion of Cuba 40 years ago. An aircraft at Elgin um, Air Force Base would be painted and numbered as an exact duplicate for a civil registered aircraft belonging to a CIA propriety organization in the Miami area. At a designate time, the duplicate would be substituted for the actual civil aircraft and would be loaded with selected passengers all boarded under carefully prepared aliases. The actual registered aircraft would be converted into a drone, remote controlled plane, their word for it. Takeoff times of the drone aircraft and the actual aircraft would be scheduled to allow a rendezvous south of Florida. I mean, he's been tested unlike any other president, this 9-11. We have in this past year made great progress in ending the long era of conflict and cold war. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, He argued that the use of any and all means to reach their final goal was justified on the grounds 
that the ruler who governed by the moral code was not a skilled politician because he left himself vulnerable and is in unsuitable position to his throne. He said, those who wish to rule must have recourse to cunning and to make believe because great national qualities like frankness and honesty are vices in politics. Fellow citizens will meet violence with patient justice, assured of the rightness of our cause, and confident of the victories to come. In all that lies before us, may God grant us wisdom, and may he watch over the United States of America. Union Banking Corporation was liquidated by the U.S. government and Prescott Bush received 1.5 million dollars for his holdings in his Nazi business and that was the beginning of the Bush family fortune for all intents and purposes. George Bush takes his inspiration from what he learned in Skull and Bones and from the Thule Society that Hitler and Goebbels and Goring cut their teeth in, Bohemian Grove, these evil organizations that perpetrate the ugly things that these criminals are doing to this country for which they must be held accountable. They are the most violent, dirtiest people on the face of the earth. Somewhere, Americans are going to have to take their country back and start finding out who are these people. Who are these people we call our representatives? The Bushes. George Bush, the president, his father, went around the country talking about a new world order. The people who are running this country from behind the scenes do not care a thing about Americans or bloodshed anywhere. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about what it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> Sir. Are you a member, were you a member of Skull and Bones in college and Bush? Were you in the same <laughs> secret society? That's all right. Let me answer this question. And what you're looking at here, staggeringly, is um, a group of people, some of the most famous people in America, in long gowns. Behind them there, you see a 40-foot stone owl. And there's the fire between them, next to the lake at Bohemian Grove. Now, one might wonder, understandably, why the people that run the banking, political, um, economic system, and the media, 
in America should be dressed in long robes, doing a ceremony to a 40-foot stone owl. I think we should be told. And no doubt you'll be hearing about all the differences between John Kerry and George W. Bush. Uh, but we've discovered they do have something in common. During their respective college days at Yale, they both belong to a group called Skull and Bones. He's come pretty close. She was part of a team that successfully recorded part of the initiation ceremony that takes place in the tomb's courtyard. Okay, you have the doorway here. Yeah. Okay, then to the right you have a hedge, and yeah. then you have um, an evergreen tree. If you follow yeah. that line straight back, the courtyard's in there. Oh, okay. So, so that's where they have the ceremonies in there. The outdoor part of it. Part of it was indoors. So we only got to see the outdoor part. Right. We only got to and, and to listen to the outdoor part. God only knows what went on indoors. And what did you hear? What, what was it you know? You managed to get this unique Oh, access it was disgusting. It. it was gross. I mean, they were pretending to murder people. The 15 new members of the club are being introduced into the macabre rituals of Skull and Bones by the senior students who are about to graduate. The club has what some might see as a strange fascination with death, skulls and bones. There's the chance too Difficult to hear, first of all, but including the devil equals death, and death equals death. But when you get into a secret society of spirit worshippers, then, and especially when you're invited there by the direction of the higher-ups in the spirit world. You never get out of there alive. And he told us, he says, look, we worship spirits. We worship Lucifer, the Lucifer and all his angels. They're just as beautiful as they did before they were cast out of heaven. He says, there was a misunderstanding in the whole thing, he says, in the, among the inhabitants of the galaxies. And he says, our master was misunderstood. And they always praise the, the great master, Satan, as a super intelligent being that he is. Beautiful to behold. And if he ever appears to you, you won't be able to look upon him because he'll be too bright. Their plot, their plan, their conspiracy remains invisible. The whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an R R an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. make a list of hypotheses. This is obviously not, you know, not the natural phenomenon. And uh, the extraterrestrial explanation seemed to be the best one. Why shouldn't we, we know that there, there's got to be life throughout the universe. So why shouldn't it be able to come here, especially since there must be civilizations there that are, you know, thousands, if not millions of years ahead of us. But then as you as you get more and more data, you realize that's not what the witnesses are describing. <laughs> many, what the witnesses are describing is something that, in many cases, comes out of nowhere, disappears into nowhere. There are cases of objects becoming transparent on the spot, mm -hmm. physical objects, material objects. And I have no, no question that the, you know, people have said, well, the valet doesn't believe uh, this is physical. Well, of course it is physical. It's material at some times. But it can also change shape. It can also merge with other objects, and it can also disappear on the spot. Well, if it does that, uh, then it could be from anywhere, anytime. always try to, you know, to discredit the old legends, trying to say, no, these people were crazy, they thought everything was possible, 
But now we have the videos, and that's the big difference. Could you believe there are videos now of probably angels in the sky? And then I started looking at, at some of the things that didn't fit. And one of the things that you know, I had to ask is, when did this actually start? Uh, every UFO book starts with, you know, on June 24, 1947, Kenneth Arnold saw something about mm -hmm. the Ukrainians. Well, well, that's not really true. I mean, you, we have data from the 30s and the 20s and, and from uh, 1896 and 1897 all over the United States, and then you can go back in, in history. And many people don't want to hear that. They want to hear that this is... Uh, you know, if you follow the first level extraterrestrial theory, then ETs, uh, you know, discovered us uh, when the atom bomb went off and they came here to study us. Well, that's not what the data says. So when did it start? And I found, uh, as I found an, an enormous wealth of data going back to medieval times and, and even before. Of course, as you go back in history, you lose the the cultural context and it's harder to, to, to understand the data but in medieval times there were records especially the records of the church that were kept very very carefully uh, about strange phenomena you know the, the, the skeptics are always saying well give us your best case and we'll take it apart there is no such thing as one best case in, in any field you have to look at an accumulation of cases and look for patterns, and, and then that's how the phenomenon reveals itself to you. And for a long period of time, or for a period of time, I believed it was extraterrestrial. I now believe it is interdimensional, uh, the phenomenon. In other words, we're looking at so-called spirit beings from another dimension. And uh, I back this up in the new book by equating it to ancient manuscripts where these beings manifested uh, to, to human beings and what their reactions were, and then comparing it to reactions present day of people who have had encounters, and the similarities are striking. Mm -hmm. First of all, you say to yourself, why would, why would, let's say, anyone deliberately crash saucers in Roswell, New Mexico, and then allow the bodies to be retrieved? What are these bodies, in fact? And this, it took me a long time to figure this out. And this is a theory, okay? There's a difference between the greys, the little guys, right, that we see that have now been enculturated with the big black right. slanted eyes that are about four feet tall, all right? Mm -hmm. Those, let's just call them the greys because pretty much everyone knows them as greys. But there's another creature which, which people and, and um, abductees talk about that they see on board the ships, and these are tall beings, and they, they assume different forms. Sometimes they can appear as reptilian. Other times they can appear as insectoid. Other times they can appear as Nordic. In other words, in my opinion, they're shapeshifters. Now, why would I say that? What backs it up? There's a scripture, once again, from our, from our spiritual handbook, which says that basically um, uh, fallen angels can appear as angels of light if they so choose. Okay. okay. They can appear as angels of light if they so choose. That's a shapeshifter. But okay. it shapeshifts. It can appear as whatever it wants to. I believe that many of us were shown these documents over the years so that later we would talk about it. I mean, how can you keep the existence of extraterrestrials, if they were real, a secret? And how could anyone keep quiet knowing that they had seen documentation, official government documents labeled top secret, that expressed that these extraterrestrials were real and had visited this earth? I wanted to know just how true all of this was, and I began a program of research to find out if extraterrestrials were real. What I discovered was amazing. What I discovered, ladies and gentlemen, is that there has been a plan in existence to create an artificial extraterrestrial threat to this Earth in order to create a one-world totalitarian socialist government. 
all the bombardment of the public with movies about flying saucers in the 50s right after the United Nations Treaty was signed and the UN Participation Act was pushed through Congress and all of the incidents since that have convinced the majority of the American people that flying saucers are real and extraterrestrials exist and that flying saucers are from an extraterrestrial origin. This is being promulgated in many ways by television commercials, in the movies, in the newspapers, by creating incidents either real or imagined. How can a nuts and bolts spacecraft, you know, two objects that are supposed to be made of metallic steel, fly into each other at thousands of kilometres an hour, become one object and then fly off in another direction? He says the UFOs do not seem to exist as tangible manufactured objects. They do not conform to the natural laws of our environment. They seem to be nothing more than transmogrifications tailoring themselves to our abilities to understand. The thousands of contacts with the entities indicate that they are liars and put on artists. The UFO manifestations seem to be by and large merely minor variations of the old age demonological phenomena. And again the researchers will show you that the messages being received are deceptive in nature. They will tell you things like, well, you know, we've come from Venus or Mars in the 60s. That was the messages. Well, we now know that's impossible. Now they say they come from Sirius or Orion or Zeta Reticuli or somewhere far off where we can't test those claims. And that's the problem. And some of the stories they've told us like that, we know to be demonstrably not true. And if someone comes to you, Chris, and tells you a story and does all these things and says, I'm here to help you, but then does brutal things to you and then lies to you, then I don't think trust is a, is a good place to start. There is no evidence I wish to emphasize that these life forms from elsewhere are hostile towards us. a plan to bring about a one world government than to create, create the possibility in the minds of the people of the world that we are being threatened from some other species, from some other planet, and do it in a way that if anybody questioned it or challenged it or wants to talk about it publicly, that they are ridiculed. <laughs> 